Ken's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, throughout the day, we um, have patients come in. They may need a reprogramming, et cetera. And they're, I try and uh, post occasionally interesting things that, uh, that pique my curiosity. So this uh, patient of mine, uh, Mike, he said, call me whatever I want. Uh, but uh, we've known each other for a good long time. And we implanted him in uh, the end of 2016, was it? Mm -hmm. um, with a nevrospinal cord stimulator. And, you know, stimulators are not perfect. And so I'm, um, I'm of the opinion that they don't work for everybody, but they often work for some. And, um, and they work commonly partway for most people. But uh, it depends on kind of pain and what, what's bothering the, 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 the patient, what is the underlying diagnosis, and then occasionally, and actually not so occasionally, you run into people who, uh, who it's been working for really, really well. And the thing is, is that, you know, I've implanted, I don't, probably more than a thousand stimulators, so they're, everyone's out there in the community, but you don't see them because there's no need for them to come see you. So when someone comes in and they're doing really well and just need a little tweak, it provides an opportunity for me to just ask questions. So. Here's Michael, um, and so what is what was your experience with the trial first and foremost? That was kind of interesting to me. Uh, <clears throat> before the, uh, the trial, I was having trouble uh, walking, pretty much doing anything. I had pain in my buttocks down to my, my feet. Um, I've always had neuropathy, um, but the worst was from the back down. Uh, it would affect being able to walk. Um, Two days before the trial, I couldn't do 1,500 steps. Wow. Um, the day after the trial, I did seven to 10,000. I don't even remember. I know we did yes. as many as I could. Um, and I was able to do yard work, uh, go to the mall, go to the store, uh, and it was uh, virtually no pain. Um, down to the buttocks. Um, after implantation, um, there were a couple occasions where it would turn off, and immediately I felt pain from the buttocks down where I couldn't walk. Uh, and as soon as I was able to get the remote and turn it back on, uh, the pain went away in literally minutes. Uh, and I was fine. That's incredible. And what's interesting is about, you know, for me, these new waveforms that we've been working on for the past five, ten years. Are there sub thresholds so people can't you can't feel the stimulation? It's the first really ability to have a like a double blind, you know, where you truly you have no idea whether it's on or off because you can't feel anything. We said for years, you know, we we could never do uh, you know what we call um, a proper randomized controlled trial with a placebo because there was no placebo because everyone had to feel the stimulation, the the tonic stimulation. It was obvious, it felt like a tens unit. But now with these different waveforms, burst and, and high frequency and high density and others, we really, you don't have to feel it. But what's amazing is that you knew immediately when it was off. Oh yeah. And I mean, just like light switch almost. Yes. And you knew when it was turned back on because your ability to function your pain was just immediately Very effective. Well, yeah. um, so I think probably, you know, we're, we're developing what we call level one data, which is incontrovertible, the highest level of uh, scientific uh, statistical um, probability um, in science uh, with neuromodulation, with spinal cord stimulation, because now we're able to really see what it's like with people having it on or off without them knowing whether it's on or off. And that's impressive. So you're back today, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the program a little bit. Some of your pain has gone up higher in the low back. We're gonna try blending some of these uh, different um, modalities, some of these different waveforms uh, to, to have them run actually simultaneously. And see if uh, that helps. I also mentioned uh, uh, I've had back pain since '85, which was the first accident. Uh, been on tens unit, been on a lot of oxy, and so I've taken as much as 200 milligrams a day. Wow! Um, and now nothing really. That's incredible. Wow. I mean, it really is incredible. And I mean, it's incredible not just for you. It's also incredible because, as you know, we've got an opioid yeah, epidemic yeah. here in, in the U.S. and you know, the question is whether that really helps people long term. And, you know, when you don't have that, a lot of people, you take away pain medicine, and you think, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking away function from these people. And yet we know it's a, it's a curse and it's a blessing at the same time. So to have something else that can give relief other than narcotics or opioids. It worked even better, so. It's incredible. Any 
counsel to other people who are going who were going through now what you were then years ago in terms of try it or 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 do it a certain way or don't do it this way how, how would you if someone came to you who didn't have a stimulator and said i've got back and leg pain what would you tell them i know it's work for you so it's you're positive about it but do you have any any counsel as far as do you it, yeah it works <laughs> and i can say that uh uh and like nothing i have is neuropathy and uh, that started again in 85 with first the big toe and spread and I've had almost every doctor when I went for nerve tests would say, you've got diabetes. Yes. And I don't have diabetes. Uh, it's nerves. Yes. Uh, and with the low frequency, it's the first time. Um, uh, it does, it, my feet, if you, you know, when it's turned up, I don't feel my feet. They, they don't hurt. Uh, I mean, usually at night, I would have to use this roller. Yes. Uh, for 10, 15 minutes, first few minutes, it hurt like hell. And then it would kind of numb the feet, and I'd be able to go to bed. Uh, now I just turn on the, um, the low frequency, uh, crank it up, and I'm fine. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's interesting because for years we used to say it's it's one of the harder diagnoses to implant for was peripheral neuropathy, and is you know you try it, and some people do whatever, but you know, and we've had now a prospective study uh, with never looking at uh, diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And, Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Peripheral neuropathy is peripheral neuropathy. The, the cause of it doesn't matter in terms of the treatment, in terms of pain. Um, but it's really wonderful to have a treatment, a non-narcotic, you know, non-gabapentin, uh, non-chemical treatment. Yeah, you know? the, any of the drugs I gave me made me loopy right. uh, and really didn't do anything. Uh, I mean, it was just always there. I mean, I can't wear sneakers or shoes. Uh, I have to wear sandals, and it always feels like my feet are being squeezed. And then yes. I can't work on walk on hard surfaces. Hmm. It feels like I'm walking on uh, river rock. Yes. So yeah. I have to have padded sa uh, sandals to do that. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and let me uh, chat with you a little bit. Um, is it okay if I put this on my sure. YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, listen, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks. <clears throat>